All right, guys, so right now I'm in Virginia visiting my sister-in-law and brother-in-law for that matter. It's Wifey Sauce's sister who just had a baby, so I'm now an uncle. We're visiting family and stuff, so I'm actually shooting in their house right now, which is why I'm in a bedroom. That's that's unfamiliar to me. Um, I chose this room because the echo's actually not too bad and the lighting's decent, so. This is what we're working with. Um, today I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I made my own in-flight entertainment center uh, setup, whatever you wanna call it. Gee willikers, what's that thing in your hand? It looks sad and probably doesn't perform well. You'll be much happier with the Iron Claw RGB gaming mouse from Corsair. It has a lightweight body and contoured shape that's perfect for palm grips and larger hands. An 18,000 DPI optical sensor built to last Omron switches and seven programmable buttons are sure to make this your new favorite pointer. Click on the link below for more info. I've been pretty fed up with the in-flight entertainment screens uh, that most planes have. Either the video quality sucks or the audio, I think the audio is probably the biggest issue. It's usually just terrible quality and not loud enough to even overcome the sounds of the plane. The touch screens are usually really finicky and you never really know what you're gonna get with the actual media selection. Uh, sometimes it's fairly limited. So I decided to make my own portable entertainment center and I actually got to test mine out on the plane right here. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I went about putting it together and how it actually worked out for me on the plane in action. It's also worth noting that this was a total unexpected and impromptu idea that I had the night before my flight left the next morning. So I had limited time and very limited materials to put this all together. So consider this a, a prototype of sorts, a rushed prototype. Uh, so don't judge me too hard. Let's take a look at the parts to make this happen. For starters, we have this portable monitor from Uperfect. It's a Chinese brand, 13.3 inches, which is quite a bit larger than the screens you'll find on most planes. And I did a dedicated video on this. So if you wanna find out more information about it, go ahead and check that out. But it's IP IPS, you can see that uh, we've got quite a bit of IO here, full size HDMI, mini display port, USB type C, one's just for power and data, the other is actually Thunderbolt 3 supported. And you can see here, I've actually mounted a Raspberry Pi 3B plus on the backside of the display. It would have been a lot easier if I had an actual case for the Raspberry Pi, but again, this was the night before and I did not have one. So instead I took the lid of an Altoid box, drilled some holes in it and zip tied the Raspberry Pi to the box. That way I could actually have a flat surface that would adhere well to the display. Using some adhesive Velcro, pretty simple. You can also see I bent down some of the tin right here. So we have access to the micro SD card um, that's got our operating system on it. I also kind of tried to roll the edges there so I don't cut myself in the process of, of handling it. This is what's driving the whole scene. It's running the whole show and it's perfectly capable of playing back HD video. You can see we've got an HDMI, a little HDMI cable coming off of here. And I've got a little tie down there for cable management to keep it from flopping around this goes straight into the monitor just like that and then on the other side we have usb there's four usb ports here you can see we've already populated three of them two of them are dongles one for a mouse one for keyboard and then this is actually a 32 gig usb stick that we have our uh, movies loaded onto now originally i tried to use the last usb port to power the monitor which is why i have this little cable management accessory thing that's just stuck on with adhesive but i ended up not needing to use this because the usb port on the raspberry pi wasn't enough to actually drive this display so instead we're just gonna power it straight from this uh, five volt 2.4 amp USB AC adapter. That's assuming of course that my seat on the plane will actually have an outlet that works and is able to use this. In case it doesn't, however, we have a 20,000 milliamp battery. This thing's a total beast. This is from Easy AC or Easy ACC. I'm not exactly sure how they pronounce it, but uh, it's a fantastic little unit. I've been using this for a while now. It's got four USB ports, five volt, two amp connections, and uh, it's even got a little flashlight on there, which might actually come in handy on the plane. And essentially we have two cables powering the entire setup. Uh, one end is USB type A and the other ends are USB type C to drive the monitor and micro USB in order to power the Raspberry Pi. You can see I zip tied both three foot cables together just for ease of use and uh, to keep them a bit more tidy on the plane. Now I could have just plopped this monitor down on the, on the fold out tray in front of me, but then I would have had to look down the whole time while watching movies. And that eventually leads to a lot of neck pain and it's just, uh, it's really bad posture. It's not very comfortable. So I wanted to get this eye level or, or as eye level as possible, which is why I bought this little car mount. It's actually a suction mount. You can see that there's a magnet on this side. This is from OHL Pro, by the way. But the mount came with a, a couple magnetic pieces that have adhesive on one side. So I just stuck one to the monitor and it's as simple as clicking it like that. And then you just stick the suction cup onto the actual entertainment screen of the plane. Uh, that's assuming, of course, that your plane has an entertainment screen. Otherwise, this kind of doesn't work. But every cross-country flight I've ever taken uh, has had an in-flight display, so I wasn't too worried about that. But uh, moving on here, we have a couple peripherals to control everything. This is not a touch screen, so we needed uh, some devices to interface with the OS. So we've got this little candy board that uh, I didn't buy specifically for this project. I've had this for like 
years, for years and years, and it's just a handy little USB mini keyboard. Obviously, you have to use your thumbs to, to type. It's not a full-fledged keyboard, and it's got this nice little trackpad that you can use uh, horizontally or vertically. Most of the time, however, I'll probably be using this Logitech G305 uh, wireless mouse, which is a fantastic gaming mouse. For, for being wireless, it's, it's super quick and responsive, not that we really need it to be. It's not like we're gaming on this thing or anything, but uh, this, this mouse is also pretty portable, so it's perfect for travel. Very sharp sensor on RON switches. And then finally, we've got our headset. Now, uh, I actually initially wanted to bring my Quiet Comfort 2s from Bose, the, the noise canceling ones, because those are perfect for, for airplane rides. They just cancel out all of the plane noise. But uh, Bluetooth was not working. Bluetooth wasn't working properly, I should say, on the Raspberry Pi, because it does have built-in Wi-Fi 802.11ac, as well as Bluetooth, but the Bluetooth was just not being very stable with that Bose headset, so it just kept connecting and disconnecting. So eventually I just got sick of trying, since again, uh, limited time, and went with uh, this guy, because it has its own wireless dongle that bypasses all that Bluetooth nonsense. It's kind of funky because you've got this microphone and stuff. It's, it's a little awkward bringing this on a plane, but whatever gets the job done. So those are all the pieces of our little makeshift entertainment center. It looks like there's quite a lot here, but it actually fits inside of a, a small backpack. It doesn't take up much more room than an ordinary laptop would. And uh, of course, this could have all been made much simpler if I had just stuck with this uh, suction mount and maybe gotten a tablet that has, you know, sort of all-inclusive battery source and touchscreen and stuff like that. But this is way funner. This is, this is way funner. It was uh, definitely um, a bit more interesting uh, and warranted an actual video. Plus, this was the first time that I actually had sort of a, a neat idea on how to use the Raspberry Pi that I got uh, for Christmas last year. And this is the very first application that I've ever used it for. So I'm kind of excited just to see how it all works out. In fact, as I mentioned, I'm already in Virginia, so I have already tested this whole setup out. So let's talk about what worked and what didn't uh, when I finally got in the air. By the way, if you, in case you're wondering, I got this through TSA security line, no problem. I took this out of the bag, and so it was. this was all exposed. Like people around me were like kind of staring at it, like what the heck is that thing? But TSA just kind of briefly glanced at it and moved me along, no questions asked like they didn't even pull my bag or anything. Um, it could have also been because it was super crowded at LAX that day, but um, yeah, that was my experience anyway. I didn't have any issues getting this past security. So let's talk about how this all performed. Uh, the suction mount was flawless. I mean, there was no issues whatsoever holding up or supporting the weight of the monitor and the Raspberry Pi. Didn't fall down once. It felt completely solid. And uh, even during some mild turbulence on our flight, there was just very minimal wiggle and I was still able to continue watching my movie without any problems, really. There is one caveat here, and that's the fact that uh, the mount sticks out just a little bit too far. So you can see there's several inches of a gap between there and uh, it actually put the monitor a little too close to my eyes. I actually had to recline my seat in order to watch the movies more comfortably. Uh, but once that happened, it was fine. Also, it's just a little bit more obvious when it's sticking out, you know, several inches from, from the chair in front of you to other, other people on the plane and the stewardess. So in the future, I'd like to actually find a, a mount that has a shorter arm or at least a thinner mounting mechanism that uh, brings the screen much closer to uh, the seat in front of me. Also, while this part of the mount tilts, uh, uh, up and down, which is which is nice to have. It doesn't really pan all that much. It's, it's very limited in that area. So if I wanted to do some screen sharing, for example, because Wifey Sauce was sitting next to me during the flight, it'd be nice to get a mount that has some decent panning range as well. The only problem with that is that, uh, you know, whoever's sitting next to you would have to turn their head in order to see the screen. So potentially in the future, maybe I'll look for a mounting solution that actually puts the monitor evenly between two seats on a plane. Now, fortunately, my seat did have an AC power outlet, which was great. Unfortunately, it was a very loose outlet. So even the slightest touch on our cables here would actually pull the AC adapter completely out of the socket, which of course would kill the power to both our monitor and our Raspberry Pi, which is no good, which is why our Easy ACC battery pack saved the day here. It worked beautifully driving both devices, and um, even though it's a little bit large, it's very easy to stow it in the pouch in front of you. The battery life held up incredibly well also. After about two hours of continuous video playback, I think we only got down to about 75% as indicated by the uh, little charging LEDs. So altogether, it's looking like you could probably get around eight hours of heavy usage out of this battery, which is perfect even for lengthier flights. The cables actually worked out pretty well, but they could have been a little bit longer. I think four feet would have been perfect, especially when plugging into the AC outlet that was closer to the floor. I think it'd also be kind of cool to get some cable management accessories uh, to actually route these cables neatly around the, the seat in front of you so that they're not in the way, so you can move your tray up and down a bit more easily. The Raspberry Pi held up beautifully. It ran all of our movies without a hitch. I was really happy with the performance there, as well as the, the performance of our monitor. I'm not gonna go into too much detail if you guys wanna watch the dedicated video on this guy, uh, you know where to find it. Overall, this part of the setup
setup worked beautifully and this is kind of the bread and butter of the whole thing. So I was really happy about that. Of course, I think there's some room, room for improvement. I, I need a case for the Raspberry Pi. It'll just give me some peace of mind. And also I might actually rotate this so that the USB ports are sticking out of the side, not sticking out, but just flush with the side of the monitor to make them more accessible in case I need to use them on the flight. The mouse and candy board were fantastic. They each kind of do things that the other one can't. This one obviously has the keyboard and uh, this one's just easier to work with if you have the tray down, but if the tray is up in front of you, then uh, you kind of resort to the trackpad, which also works just fine. I was using VLC player that came pre-installed on our operating system, which by the way was the Ras Raspian. I'm still, I'm, I'm a total Raspberry Pi noob, so I think it's Raspian OS that had VLC and that's how we were playing all the movies. So there were actually a lot of media control functions through that app that were already programmed uh, to both our mouse and candy board, which made the uh, experience a bit more seamless. And then finally, we had our Corsair Void Pro headset. There were no drops or cutouts during the whole flight, no interference despite being uh, in a giant metal box in the sky. This thing worked flawlessly. And uh, while the audio or while the ear cups are definitely not noise isolating, you can definitely hear the sounds of the plane, the volume gets plenty loud to make that a non-issue. So I was really happy about that. The only thing here is that uh, we've got this microphone that makes you look like a total dork on a plane, but uh, I think the rest of the setup in front of me <laughs> was already doing a pretty good job of that. So this was just icing on the cake. So that's pretty much it. That's how I put it together and how it all worked for me in the end. I'm really impressed with how it worked out considering the fact that it was a very last minute idea. And uh, there's obviously, like I mentioned, a lot of areas that need improvement, but at least it shows pretty good potential for a DIY portable entertainment setup. So if you guys like this video, toss a like on it before you go. Also, let me know what you think about this setup. Is it ridiculous? I mean, yes, obviously it's ridiculous, but um, would you ever consider doing something like this? I'm actually kind of curious. I, I love this kind of crap. So uh, curious to see if you guys feel the same way, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm going to get out of here, spend some time with family, and uh, I'll see you guys very soon.